Hello, and you are listening to the Book Was Better podcast, the podcast where we talk about the book of the film. I'm Luke. I'm Xavier. And this week we're talking about Flipper. Flipper. Hey, you. Put down the popcorn and turn up the light. It's gonna be alright, my friend. Crap, Xavier, here we are. We are flipping out over Flipper. That's right. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. God, this was the movie that scared a whole generation from going in the ocean. That's right, yeah. Uh, much like uh, Psycho scared, <laughs> scared people away from using the shower, Yeah. Uh, uh, I actually had ran into some problems with not going into bodies of water and losing some friends. Poor hygiene. Yeah, exactly. I, poor hygiene kind of meant that uh, no one would want to spend any time with me. But that's okay. You know, I don't mind. Well, look, I don't want to go in the ocean and have things flipping out all over the place. Uh, like ninjas and stuff. Well, that's the thing about dolphins. is like they've got flippers on their side and on the back. And, like, I think there's probably one on their head. I, can't, I don't know. Too many flippers uh, flipping out all over the place. I know. It, it's pretty crazy. Uh, but people love dolphins. I, I think, uh, you know, that might be a controversial opinion. I don't know why dolphins got a free pass, but it's just one of those things where you have to like them. They're very intelligent. Um, they're playful creatures, I think. Uh, and I think we're just sort of threatened by them, so we have to be their friends. Yeah, but, like, pigs are smart and we eat pigs. That's true, I guess. Uh, they're not smart enough to know how to breathe underwater. That's true. Although dolphins don't do that. They've just got the blowhole. They're cheating. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. They totally just pop up and breathe just like you and I do. Uh, they're just playing hard to get by hanging out in the ocean all the time. Yeah, maybe that's it. They've just got that sort of mysterious, they're kind of playing, yeah, aloof, like, you know, they don't have to be around us all the time sort of thing. So we vie for their attention. I think it's because they're delicious. They know they're delicious. So... Uh, uh, they're always just that little bit out of reach. Yeah, it's the th- that's the thing, because they're intelligent enough to be self-aware about it. Whereas with pigs, they probably don't realize. They're like, oh, we're dying for some reason and, you know, uh, they're eating us, I guess. I just wonder where our love of dolphins ends. Like, if they were discovered to be really, really tasty in a kind of bacon mm. way, like bacon of the sea, would we then go, you know what, Let, we, we'll change where this uh, line is drawn. Yeah, I could see that happening. Just the way that, like, internet culture has sort of formed itself around, like, bacon fetishism. Yes. Uh, I think easily the same thing could happen with, like, a little slice of flipper. I'll say it right now. I would try it. I would eat a dolphin burger. Or a dolphin steak. Yeah, how would you take your dolphin? What's your flavor of choice? I would want to try, like, a dolphin risotto. Like, something real nice and fancy. I I would like a sort of uh, dolphin steak with a tiny a little bit of beef on the top. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Kind, I like kind that. Kind of reverse surf and turf. Yeah, and it's also like that little bit of steak on top is kind of like a dolphin's fin through an ocean of uh, dolphin. Yeah. I don't know. I'm losing something, but I'm not a chef. No, you know. no, but you do know what would make a good Instagram picture. And that's exactly what it would be. That would be a beautiful, that's right. uh, beautiful setting. It's all about presentation, really, when it comes down to it. It certainly is. And look... We're doing Flipper here. Uh, This is really interesting because this is kind of a coincidence that last week I did Lassie. And it turns out that these are the exact same stories. Like kid, troubled kid, kind of cool dude kid from the big city goes to uh, bumfuck nowhere and turns, uh, gets his sort of attitude readjusted by an animal. Mm. Although it's not necessarily bumfuck nowhere, because in this case it's bumfuck Australia, which I think we're sort of qualified to talk about in a unique way. Are they in Australia? I think so, right? Doesn't I, I think it looks like uh, uh, like the Queensland or uh, uh, what am I talking about? I think it looks like uh, the Sunshine Coast. Maybe it probably there's sunshine and they're on a coast. It was, but I thought that they were. Oh god, I'm trying to find it in the book now. I didn't write where they were, but everyone's American in it except for Paul Hogan. Yeah, that's true. I thought they were in Malibu or something. Yeah, maybe you're right. In fact, yeah. Why would they send? Why would they send Elijah Wood all the way to Australia? 
He's not a convict. He just wants to go to the Chili Willies show. Exactly. He's on vacation. He didn't steal a loaf of bread to support his family. Yeah, that's now, right. Now, the author of this book, this is, by the way, the 1996 uh, adaptation of Flipper. I think there was also a TV series around this time uh, starring Jessica Alba. Uh, but this is the 19... 19- yes. Yes. Which I haven't seen. I imagine... Was she quite young? Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't seen either, but I did some research. So, you know. Uh, you're welcome. I can't believe that there was this insatiable urge for dolphin-related entertainment back in the middle 90s. I have a feeling the producers of um, Flipper looked at a movie like Free Willy, which I think had just come out maybe a few years earlier, and thought, oh, yeah, we could get a yeah, piece absolutely. of that. absolutely. They've already got the property. Uh, so this book is yeah. by uh, Dinah Anastasio, butchering that, I'm sure, Author of such classics as Big Bird Can Share. Oh. Uh, Big Big Bird Can Share, but once. That's right, he can, he's capable. What is the Super Bowl? Um, Just a big bowl, as far as I know. What about this one? Who was Steve Irwin? (sighs) I mean, people have wondered that since the dawn of time. I don't think we'll ever truly know the real Steve Irwin. I think he was a huckster. I don't think he was Australian at all. He didn't have an Australian accent. That wasn't a real Australian accent. He got a lot of his vowels wrong. I think I had never heard of him until like he showed up in America. I think yeah, that's he's bullshit. True. I I reckon um, it was Bindi and behind him just pulling the strings the whole I time. I think it was Oz exploitation. Yeah, you and- might be right. There's a bit of that coming Isn't up in this movie. Isn't it funny that Bindi Irwin, like, when she was a kid, she looked like she was missing a chromosome. Like, she kind of looked a bit like a spider monkey. But uh, now she doesn't look that bad. So, what happened there? Um, I don't know. I think years of grief and uh, learning to live life on her own as an independent adult um, may have shaped her life in I that kind of way. I reckon get uh, Mulder and Scully on that X-File. And uh, finally, another book here. Oh, Apollo 13. You know Tom Hanks. Thanks for the Hanks. And a book called Pass the Peas, Please, colon, A Book of Manners. Mmm. Pass the Pea, Please. Yeah, well, <laughs> look, see, it sounds like you don't need to read any of these books because you've got it all sorted. My secret? I've read and, them uh, all. And if you're wondering why we're, we're so uh, flipper and plea wasting time today it's because this book is 58 pages long it's more like a promotional pamphlet for the film that uh, i think yeah it's the it's the booklet that comes on the inside of the dvd yeah, actually the writing the text is quite small to be fair that that was a bit uh, of a disappointment but yep same story as lassie flipper dog of the sea here we go and uh, you watched and dog of yes, our heart you watched the film yeah, that's right. Yeah, I got to check out the movie. Uh, I'd never seen it before. It's not a. It's not something I watched growing up. Um, but I was. I was wowed by this incredible cast. You got Paul Hogan, we mentioned before, Elijah Wood as well in the lead role. But we have some really interesting character roles. Isaac Hayes pops up and plays the sheriff. Um, we've got Jonathan Banks from Breaking Bad, who plays the villainous. He's Dirk Mike Moran. from uh, Breaking Bad. Am I right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, his his character in this is just so thin. He's literally just some guy who really hates dolphins for no Fucking particular hates reason. Fucking stinking guts. Yeah. Uh, and there's music in it by Crosby, Stills, and Nash, which is so crazy. Yeah, that's right. All three of them got into the studio and were like, what do we know about dolphins? And I love sing. it when all three get together because for me, that's their best work. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know when I'm listening to a Crosby record, I'm just going, where's Stills yeah. and Nash? Yeah, always. Uh, and don't get me started on no, Young. No. So, uh, let's get into this. The beginning. Let's read the beginning. This is a little bit tricky. Uh, we're on Skype, if people hadn't realized, because we're on opposite sides of the country. But uh, l- let's do it by um, in-, in bits and pieces. S- Sandy sure. Burns punched numbers on his phone and dropped down onto his bed. His friend Joel picked up tough after the first ring. So, Joel asked. Sandy are we in? laughed. He knew his friend had been sitting by the phone since dawn. He decided to drag out the suspense for as long as he could. Okay, so I'm surfing all night on the net and. Come on, man, Joel interrupted impatiently. Just tell me if you got it or not. As I was saying, I bust in on the Red Hot Chili Peppers forum. The tour manager's girlfriend was looking for some freebies at this health spa just like we thought she would. It looked like she'd do anything, so... 
Did you get it, Sandy? Joel was dying to know. Well, I surfed some more and got them for it. Did some trading here and there, and in return, Sandy paused. Yeah, and? Joel was getting really annoyed So she asked what she could do for me, and I said, Well, how about a couple of all-access laminates? You know, to get us backstage so we could meet the group. Oh, Catch yeah. Catch being, they are going to have to blow Anthony Kiedis. Ah, uh, it's fair enough. It kind of comes with Other, the territory. Uh, Catch being, might get hepatitis. But, uh, think of yeah. those laminates. Other uh, Catch being, you have to listen to the Red Hot, <laughs> Ch- Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, for uh, an hour or two. I will say, though, like, you know, uh, 1996, this movie came out. Uh, this is post-Blood Sugar Sex Magic, but pre-Californication. Sort of a glory period for the band. Uh, so, you know, he's forgiven for being caught up in the uh, they in the movement. They brought out a single uh, which had uh, clips from this film called uh, Suck My Flip, uh, which was fantastic. <laughs> I remember being into that. There's no lyrics in it. It's just Ketis doing a dolphin <laughs> yes, impression. It's fantastic. Uh, I th- this is the other thing that it has in common with Lassie. It's funny. Like I had friends that were into Red Hot Chili Peppers around this time, and mm. I was into Smashing Pumpkins. And what oh, struck yes. me when I watched Lassie was that there is a Smashing Pumpkins song. And I thought, oh, yeah. shit. So, you know, I'm thinking I'm not that mainstream and, um, you know, that I'm listening to these bands that are a little bit edgier and uh, have a, a little bit of integrity. And then I realized, no, they're willing to give a song to the Lassie film. And then Elijah Wood turns up in this and he's wearing a Smashing Pumpkins t-shirt. He wears two! He has two different Smashing Pumpkins t-shirts in this one movie. As well as, uh, who is it? A Soul Asylum t-shirt? Uh, they've really gone way out of their way to characterize this character, you know, to really build him as an alternative cool build teenager. Build up Sandy Burns. He sounds like he's from Bikini yeah. Bottom. Yeah. <laughs> he sounds like something you'd want to avoid. <laughs> Sen- go down to the clinic. I've got the Sandy Burns. <laughs> and it's not pretty. Uh, but look, everything's coming up Sandy. He's 14 years old. His mom's going away. He thinks basically he's going to get to stay with his grandma and She'll let him go out and party with Flea. That is, ex- he's gonna get to slap that bass. <laughs> gonna get put a sock on his cock and uh, just go nuts. <laughs> My grandma breaks her full hip, and now uh, he has to go and stay with his uncle Porter. That's right. Um, Sandy's eyes widened as he recalled what had been said about Uncle Porter. You mean the low life deadbeat? The loser, the hippie Just dropout, say it, the Australian Paul. Yeah, we all know what Hogan, you're trying to say. Crocodile Dundee, uh, the only, despite the fact that every single movie that's made in America has at least three Australians in it now. If you asked an American mm. who's an Australian actor, they, they would only be able to think of one: Paul Hogan, Crocodile Dundee. That's maybe Yahoo serious at yeah, a stretch. They, they think he's a, like Crocodile Dundee is a real person. Uh, that he's on our money. Uh, they yep. are very convinced uh, by Hogue's uh, roguish, cheeky satire from back in the 80s. And uh, it got him a gig in, in Flipper. That's right. The dream gig. The call everyone in Hollywood's <laughs> waiting for. You're waiting for that Flipper offer to drop. And uh, yep. so poor old Sandy, he is off to a shitty, beautiful, tropical island for the summer. He was still feeling sick, but he, now he knew there was nothing he could do about it. He had tried everything. He had begged. He had pleaded. He had done everything but get down on his hands no, and knees. he was saving that for the peppers. <laughs> the the peppermint. Pepper Sergeant Chili Peppers, <laughs> Lonely Hearts Club. And, uh, yes. So, uh, he gets on a ferry to the dock, uh, but no one meets him, so he has to walk to Uncle Porter's shit shack. The inside of the house was even worse than he had expected. The place was covered with dust. Old chicken bones lit at a table and rested on the arm of a chair. A lizard watched him from on top of the TV. It was terrible and it was empty. Sounds like a typical Australian household. Yeah, I don't know how they got the rights to shoot this at my house. I didn't. I wasn't what aware of it. What do you think the chicken bones is? Is this like KFC binge or is it voodoo? 
I think it's literally just uh, he had several pet skeletons. I'm sorry, <laughs> pet yes. skeletons. He had several <laughs> pet chickens who just all gradually died out of and, negligence. Uh, he couldn't bring himself to move the bodies. And here is Uncle Porter himself. This is a pretty grand entrance. A young woman was in the driver's seat and she was pulling him on water skis. He was dressed in loud Hawaiian shorts and he was drinking <laughs> a beer. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Hogan drinking a <laughs> fucking beer. How Aussie is that, mate? It is perfect, but it does, it does get a bit better yes. in the next scene. He's got a pelican who's called Pete, uh, who's a pet. A pet pelican Sit, called Pete. Uncle Porter shouted, Sit down, Pete. Pete sat and Porter poured some beer into his beak. The bird seemed satisfied. Of course, Sandy thought the pelican had just wanted some beer. Okay, I might I might just clarify here because it's weird that a, such a short book has gone into so much detail ahead of it because I'm pretty sure this is where the movie starts or at least where I started paying attention. Like, you know, the opening montage has some dolphins swimming around and that sort of thing. But then basically it's just... Uh, we just cut to, you know, uh, uh, Hogan back to the camera, pouring beer down a bird's throat. And that's just how you introduced this character. A pelican on the piss. There, there's, a, there's another yeah. book for you, Dina Anastasio. Please pass the piss. <laughs> a book of manners for pelicans. <laughs> well, I've heard that their bills can hold more than their belly cans. It sounds like a challenge. Them yes. drinking words. Uh, and no mention <laughs> of Paul Hogan being Australian in the book. Uh, no reference to that at all. Uh, That's weird. I wonder if they maybe wrote the book before they'd cast him, but it seems such a Paul Hogan role. I can't think of what it would be like if he wasn't Australian. I don't Australian. know who you would cast. Uh, yeah, no idea. Uh, Paul, Paul Giamatti. Giamatti. <laughs> Jeremy Renner, somebody yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, and he makes yeah. Sandy sleep in a cot, which happens to be filled with SpaghettiOs. Yeah, there's a lot of spaghettios going on in this movie. Let's uh, let's talk about this breakfast scene um, that, that I think cuts in about here. Um, so Paul Hogan's won a contest or some? No, that's right. He he's bought a whole bunch of spaghettios wholesale from a cruise ship. Um, so you got that as his like staple food. Uh, then also he's got uh, you know slices of white bread which he pins to the wall and then cooks one side of using a like a ga- a blowtorch. Yeah. Uh, like a butane sort of... I guess he just really likes the flavour of, like, horrible poison. And this is gas. an old joke of his. This is something he used to do on the uh, Paul Hogan show. Yeah. Oh, really? I'm not, yeah. I'm not aware of that. Um, there's also a scene here where he, he and uh, Elijah Wood are drinking coconuts. Uh, and Elijah Wood's struggling to get his open. And Paul Hogan grabs it from him and then violently and sort of unfortunately like sexually like thrusts his fingers into yes. it uh like punches through the coconut sort of to impress two him. fingers yeah, pressed together fucking weird right into that uh coconut yeah it's a very very intense kind of like a uh, like first day of prison like don't fuck with me or this is what's gonna happen kind of move i don't like it one bit i don't like what it says about paul hogan i don't like what Eli- what must be going through elijah wood's head i just don't like the subtext that that thing projects over the whole movie i thought it's just cried out pussy slayer i was really worried for kathy when uh we finally met her after seeing him like ram those two fingers into that coconut none of it's in the book but i'm glad you mentioned that because yeah it definitely uh will make you pause yeah it really colors your perception of the rest of the film i think and uh look some absolutely ripper dialogue here I'm just asking because a lot of people think fission's a bamboo pole and a six-pack of beer, but it's a bit rougher than that. Would you say you're a morning person? I start living after midnight, man, (sighs) Sandy replied, trying to sound mature. Oh, Frodo. (laughs) It's so weird how such a cool teenager grew up to be such a huge nerd in those (laughs) movies, in the Lord of the Rings movies. I know, because in this, he's just uh, an absolute idol. Like, what a role model. Yeah, exactly. And they go fishing on Porter's trawler in the morning. And, and poor old landlubber Sandy, absolutely chucking his guts up, mate. <laughs> and they confront a fancy boat, uh, which is filled with um, partying weekenders, who are led by, yes, Dirk Moran, as you said, Mike from Breaking Bad, which... Uh, Best character in the whole thing. Oh, totally, yeah. It's very weird casting. I mean, you know, it's actually very natural casting. It's just very strange seeing him after now being so familiar with him from other stuff. Uh, And then suddenly, just as promised, 
There are dolphins. Sandy listened, then turned just in time to see several dolphins leap out of the water. More followed, rising in the air like dancers. Sandy's breath caught in his throat as he watched them. He had never seen anything like this before. It was an amazing sight. He wanted to sex them. Like, what do you think (laughs) of those stories? You hear this about people wanting to sneak into SeaWorld or wherever to have sex with dolphins. Are dolphins the sluts of the sea? And I don't want to slut shame, but I will slut shame the dolphin. It's it's natural um, for people to want to have sex with dolphins. I think that's an urge we we can all relate to. Because they're so smooth? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like... uh, it's like they're wearing like a kinky fetish, like latex get up uh, <laughs> at all times with that rubbery skin. Oh, yeah. Oh. But it's also like dolphins have a, a real um, uh, reputation for promiscuity. They, they are, aren't they the only other animal that have sex for pleasure? Yeah, I think um, so. Other, other than me. And not a lot of people know this. Uh, and I don't, I haven't got a picture on hand or anything, but if you can look this up yourself. Um, their vaginas look exactly like a human woman's vagina. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. I might have to do some research about that. Yeah, absolutely. Like, exactly the same. Hmm. And sometimes a dolphin, like, when it's showing off and getting up, and you know when they, like, walk along the water on their tail? Oh, yeah, yeah. They'll shave it into a shape. Oh, that's very cool. Because, yeah, they're very entertaining animals. They're they sort are. Of, they're sort of clowns of the sea as well. But, um, you know, why limit it to just clowning? There's so many other forms of entertainment. Mm. They've um, Some of the campsites actually have dolphin channels. Really? That's how intelligent these guys are. I must, I must be on the wrong websites, Luke. Yeah. You must send me some links sometime. Yeah. You have to tip them fish, though, which is uh, very difficult. Hard to do over the internet. Look, it's not perfect yet. <laughs> But, but you know, you know, you'd be amazed by how pornography sort of leads the technology industry. Exactly. Like whenever something needs to happen, they'll find a way. Where there is will, there's a way. Yeah, absolutely. Where there's a willy. <laughs> It'll be freed. So, yes. uh, look, Mike, this is what I loved. Only seconds after his introduction in the film, Mike from Breaking Bad goes totally renegade. A gunshot rang out over the ocean. Another followed, then another and another. The next time Sandy looked, the dolphins had disappeared into the sea. Sandy glanced up at the deck of the Bounty Hunter. That's the name of their ship. Dick Moran was dusting off his gun. Yeah, Sandy called. Way to fish. (laughs) (laughs) That's such a sick burn, especially considering in the film, it's quite horrific. Like there's blood in the water. Dolphins are sinking to the uh, ground. If you thought that in Return of the Jedi, they lingered for far too long on the dead Ewok. uh, Flipper... (laughs) camera is right on these dolphins which are getting blown apart by a sadistic uh, Breaking Bad Mike. Mm. And pretty much Sandy just has a problem with their technique. He's like, yeah, fishing is cool. Like, do fish, but just don't use guns. Like, I'm a purist. Yeah. And the mother dolphin is killed, and that leaves this poor little dolphin all alone. Sandy saw it all. He moved to the side of the boat and gazed into the sea. He studied the water carefully, but there was no sign of the little dolphin. For some reason, he felt sad. But that was silly. It was only a fish, wasn't it? Yep, Sandy, a proud product of the American education system. They're dolphins. (laughs) They're mammals. I think he should feel guilty for not being excited uh, about a gun going off. Like, what is he, a a commie? Maybe it's already the influence of Paul Hogan, The you know, because of Australia's anti-gun laws. Maybe he's already switching sides. Yeah, I think this is totally a battle of conscience. I just hope he picks the right side. At the end. Mm, me too. We'll have to keep listening to ourselves. To <laughs> yes, find out. to find out. I wonder what we'll say. <laughs> Who knows? When the boat was secure, Porter went into the store. Sandy watched him go. Then he rushed over to the phone booth to call Joel. How is it, Joel asked. It's heaven. If you like getting up at five in the morning to get sick on an old dump of a boat. And it's great if you like watching drunken weekenders shoot a bunch of dolphins. And look, I've seen the film, not a hint of sarcasm. He's being genuine here. No, I, I, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Like, if you did like watching Drunken Weekenders shoot a bunch of dolphins, this would be one of the best holidays you could go on. <laughs> and in- You're not going to get that at Disneyland. No, that's true. Not yet. Anyway, like we said, though, if there's a demand there. Well, Disney's got that new movie coming out, don't they? Isn't there a like a Pixar? No, not Pixar. But there's, I don't know. You probably know more about this than me. There, I'm embarrassing a, myself. There's a sequel to Finding Nemo. That might yeah, have a, that's what I'm talking that about. That might have a dolphin in it. You never know. Fingers crossed. I hope Flipper makes a cameo. I think he probably will. 
Disney owns everything. I they probably own Flipper. I hope Darth Maul comes back. I, I hope so too. I hope well, he's like, just drowning it in one scene in the background. It, maybe he's bobbing in the water like a boy. Yeah, why not? Maybe both halves of him are bobbing in the water. <laughs> I don't know. What if, would you see a team-up movie with Lassie and Flipper? Now, I haven't seen Lassie, and I didn't read the book. I was you know, I wasn't here last week. Um, but from what I know about dolphins and Lassie, like Lassie's whole deal is little kids being trapped in wells, right? So what if the dolphin was trapped in the well? I'm just spitballing here. That sounds pretty good, yeah, though, right? Yeah, well, I think... I guess, I mean, the, the big problem you have to solve with a Flipper Lassie team-up movie is one of them is going to have to compromise. Yeah, exactly. Because you got land versus uh, uh, sea, and, like, sure, Flipper breathes. He comes up for air, but it's not, like, prolonged. What if it's all just set on the beach and Lassie's running along the shore and Flipper's swimming along beside him, and there it, are... It could have... No plot, no other characters, <laughs> just 90 minutes of, like, a cute dog and a dolphin flipping around. You'd sell some tickets. There could be parallel sea sand problems that are happening, like, at the same time next to each other. Yeah, totally. Like, uh, like, like, gun laws. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep that element. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's something that's uh, in the public uh, consciousness So, uh, in the store... Porter talks to Kathy, who we already know he's uh, cracked open like a coconut. Uh, she's a marine biologist, a woman. She's a woman. Uh, that you can be both. Yep. Yeah, she proves it. Look. Yeah. That's how you know it's a fantasy film. Uh, she <laughs> reveals that the fish have been pumped full of dioxins. Yeah, maybe, Porter said thoughtfully. But how'd dioxin get into our water in the first place? Somebody dumping? I think somebody's been dumping... In the water, for sure. I think somebody is named Porter. <laughs> Porter. A.K.A. Paul Logan. Porter has been sticking his ass, teary ass, over the side of his trawler and taken dioxin-filled dumps into the ocean. I mean, you have to think, why Why has he excluded himself? Why is he living on this isolated island where, like, the fishing's not that good, he's not making much money, he's clearly just trying to save money to buy SpaghettiOs. He's got to have some kind of... He's, he's either quarantining himself or, uh, you know, it's it's a decision that's been made for him because no one wants to live around his stinky shits. Say say what you will about him, though. He's a, he's a bloody Aussie battler. And I think uh, it says a lot for a cobber when he's battling, but he's still willing to share a beer with his pelican. That's right. Yeah, it's true. He's he's down on his luck. He's not a wealthy guy, but it's not all for him. You know, he's, he's sharing it around. I appreciate that. That's a good message. This is a bit selfish, though. Uh, this is him babysitting. I'm going out for dinner, Porter announced after they had showered and were settled in. After they had showered, I think they'd showered together. <laughs> he's like, you're 14. Your grandma wouldn't want you showering alone now. Come in here. Oh, can I talk to you about, because there is a shower scene in the movie. Um, uh, Porter showers, you, it, it sort of pans down from the top of his uh, body where he's like, you know, scrubbing himself and singing a song or something. Pans down to his gross, wet feet, which uh, he's using to wash dishes. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, without even a dish rag, he's literally just like rubbing his clammy, wet, gross feet up against this pile of dirty dishes. I wish I could say that's the most disgusting scene in the movie, but it's not. Well, he is Australian. We do things a little bit differently down under. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's a drought. Oh, look, bloody... Look, don't fill the sink. Just put them all in the shower with me. Fuck. Give me the baby's bowl. I'll wipe my cock on it. I, wa I wonder how he has so many dishes, because all he eats is SpaghettiOs and, like, toast from a wall. <laughs> There'd be, like, a plate, maybe two. A diet of beer shared with the pelican and SpaghettiOs, that would give mm. you some dioxin dumps, I reckon. Yeah, that's true. That's a lot of, like, uh, complex carbs, not much else. Definitely some toxic waste happening there. Uh, yeah. He continues, I'll be at Kathy's. Here's the number. You know where the food is. SpaghettiOs. SpaghettiOs. <laughs> Sandy groaned. And he just abandons him. So Sandy was sent here because he couldn't be left alone. And now he's left alone while Porter eats steak, probably in a house, a Porter house steak. Ah, oh, pretty good. Yeah, and checks yeah. out a, a marine biologist clam. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's like, come uh, over and see my clam, Porter. Come and study it. I'll teach you a few things. <laughs> come and study me clam. Show me your sea cucumber. <laughs> no, he's all about the fingers, I think. <laughs> 
Uh. He does have a, an iron uh, pair of fingers there. Quite a technique. Yeah. They call me the clam smasher. <laughs> <laughs> the clam cracker. Yeah, that's something kids can learn. Yeah, that's the name of his trawler. The clam cracker? <laughs> the clam cracker. <laughs> that's pretty good. So, look, he's out uh, doing what he's got to do, and Sandy escapes. He leaves the house in the cover of darkness. Porter awakens to find that uh, Sandy has been replaced by some pillows and a melon, uh, which I think was the perfect facsimile of Elijah Wood. It's true. Not a lot of people know this, but in the Lord of the Rings movies, um, you know, obviously he can't be there on set every single day. Um, but they didn't hire a stunt double or anything like that. There's no body double. It's literally just, uh, you know, random household objects arranged under a blanket. A melon on a stick, which was the exact same thing they did with uh, Jake Lloyd in uh, The Phantom Menace <laughs> in a lot of yeah, those scenes. Right. Yeah, Melon on a stick and... Uh, the whoo. melon on a stick proved so popular uh, and his acting ability so great that they used him for about 90% of the movie. Full credit to Industrial Light and Magic because a lot of the time <laughs> you can't, you really can't tell. Yeah, George Lucas created some amazing technologies that they used in that movie. You know, people talk down about the prequels, but the way that they brought that melon to life. I'm not afraid to say that he's a pioneer. No, exactly. And he deserves some credit for that. The sky was beginning to darken as Sandy boarded the ferry. A strong gust of wind tossed him into a seat by the window. (laughs) He was free. By tonight, he'd be backstage at the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert, and he'd never have to go fishing again, except, of course, for fishing all those pubes out of his teeth afterwards. Yeah... Fishing all those hooks out of his brain to <laughs> catchy all those great songs. I reckon they're a pretty filthy band. Oh, totally. I think that was their stock and trade. That was like their whole thing. They look dirty. Yeah. Uh, then suddenly their Uncle Porter was standing right smack in front of him. Um, and it's explained more in the film, but it's still outlandish. Like Sandy... Am am I right in thinking Sandy leaves at night, boards a ferry very early in the morning, it's still dark, and heads back off to the mainland, but somehow Porter wakes up, has breakfast, gets in his own boat, and catches up with the ferry in broad daylight, boards it, and takes uh, Elijah Wood off. I I liken this to another of my favourite movies, um, which also features uh, an aquatic animal, uh, and that's Jaws the Revenge. The fourth fourth movie in the Jaws yes. uh, franchise, in which uh, you know uh, uh, the shark from the original movie swears to plot revenge on the family uh, of uh, oh fuck I don't remember what happens Michael Michael Caine isn't it in that Yeah that's right Yeah he's in it uh, uh, I forget exactly what happens but I think he makes it all the way across the world in in the same speed as a boat or something. Well, I do think this scene definitely shoots down your Australia theory because I think getting a ferry from Australia back to Chicago to make the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert that night. Yeah, you're right. Is, it's, Unlikely. It's optimistic. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, for me, there's a weird time thing going on. I would The film I would liken it to is uh, The Empire Strikes Back when Luke's being trained for, I would think, weeks if not months whereas Han and Leia go inside a slug for a little bit and then go to Cloud City it feels like maybe a day for them yeah that's right and they cut back and forth between those scenes so you don't really notice yeah I noticed well I'll uh I'll start writing a letter Luke you can sign on the bottom and and Um, we'll we'll have our voices heard that movie features an aquatic creature as well by which I mean Yoda and that's an assumption on my part, but why would he go to a swamp if uh, he didn't like to swim occasionally? I thought you were going to say Jar Jar. No, is but... he not in that one? Ah, he's he he's all be. I remember from Star Wars. Yeah, uh, he's definitely leaves his mark on those films, so I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I haven't seen the later ones. I only saw the first one. The first, yeah, the episode one. Yeah, yeah, that's, well, right. that's the best one. Of course. They always get worse. The sequels just, oh, uh, they keep making them. Terrible. No, the first one's the best. Always the case. So, uh, back on land. Uh, the big also, the book was better. Yes. Yes. Uh, the Journey of the Wills, I call it. Uh, the Adventures of Luke Starkiller. But that's how old school I am. The Journey of the Free Will? Yeah. Yeah. Free, <laughs> free Willsies. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, back on land. Th- there's a storm a brewing. I can feel it in my bones, Annie, is what that lady in episode (laughs) one might say. Uh, Sandy still tries to escape his uncle, but Porter isn't having any of his bullshit. I've got a bad feeling about this. (laughs) Yes. 
His uncle was tackling him. He was carrying him through the grass toward the house. And then, unbelievably, he was shoving him into the cellar. Mm. Yeah, but it sounds right. like uh, M. Night Shyamalan's The Visit at this point. It's getting quite creepy. <laughs> so, uh, Porter makes him a deal. Basically, help me clean up after the storm, and then Porter will take Sandy to Orlando for the next leg of the Peppers tour. You don't think I'd let you go alone, do you? Porter smiled and offered his hand in a truce. Sandy hesitated, but then he shook it because he wanted to go to that concert so badly he could taste it. We know what he could taste. <laughs> Paul Hogan in this scene says he was, quote, grunge before there was a word for it, Uh, which is true. I think Kurt Cobain also washed his dishes in the shower using his feet. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Granted, I wouldn't necessarily put that past him. But like, what do we know? What do we know about Paul Hogan here? He's only friends with the Pelican. That's his only friend. And he feeds it beer, which, by the way, I think he's friends with the Pelican so that you'll believe that people and animals make friends like that later on in the movie. Yeah, that's good foreshadowing. That's clever. He only eats SpaghettiOs, which, yeah, I guess is kind of grunge. They don't have a lot of money. And They're he, too busy rocking out. And he can crush a clam. And he can crush a clam. Yeah. Man, this guy's cool. <laughs> I think he's great. I think. Yeah, he's a flannelette away from being, uh, you know, Eddie Vedder or whatever. Look, if you forgot about Elijah Wood and Flipper and thought of this as Hogan versus Mike from Breaking Bad. Now there's a movie. That's excellent. Yeah. They should do a sequel now, yeah. same cast. Get Shane Black to write and direct it. <laughs> yeah, it's 20 fucking, years later. It's gold. Yeah. Sandy goes snorkeling and he runs into... A dolphin was in Sandy's face, right there in front of the mask. It was staring right at him. Sandy did the only normal thing to do. He panicked, flailing his arms and yelling through the snorkel. He stumbled toward the shore. Safe at last on dry land, he turned to face the beast. The dolphin was at least 15 feet in the air. That's not how dolphins work. When it came (laughs) down, it splashed onto its side. Then it bobbed back up and let out a yip. It was showing off for him. I bet it was that saucy dolphin minx. (laughs) Uh, This is played a little bit different in the movie. As far as I remember it uh, from watching it an, an entire day ago, it's, this movie's a little slippery. It kind of, uh, it's kind of forgettable. Um, but I, I think the dolphin just kind of shows up at the house at this point, which is, like, really creepy. This is a dolphin who can, like, sense where Elijah Wood is and just kind of stalks him back to his home and yeah. shows up. Like, it's, it's very messed up. He just, like, jumps through the window and crawls into bed next to him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But he's still flipping around. <laughs> and, and he's going, touch my blowhole. Touch my blowhole. Put your fingers in it. That, that's probably <laughs> where Paul Hogan learned that technique. I bet you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Solved. Think that's funny? Go away, Sandy said. I'm going into town. You better be gone when I get back here. Dolphins can talk. Luke, <laughs> dolphins can talk. They know what he's talking about. Sandy fished Porter's old bike from the shed and rode into town, going straight to the general store. He ordered a tuna sub. Oh, that is cold, Sandy. Ch- like <laughs> That's fucked up. Canned tuna, uh, we know, kills millions of dolphins every second. Yeah, particularly in the 90s, like before it was a, a, a big issue that people knew about. But even so, still today. Probably a fair bit of dolphin uh, in this sub. Well, we were talking about eating dolphins before. It's kind of hypocritical, don't you think? Uh, of who? Of Elijah Wood? Just one- of us? <laughs> just once I want to eat dolphin and know that it's dolphin. That's right. I just want the option. Yeah, put it on a menu. I'll see how I feel. <laughs> let let me choose. Don't just tell yeah. me that dolphins get a pass. Let, let me it's decide. It's the free market. Let, let the market one. decide. Uh, then he meets a girl. His own age. Uh, her name is Kim. And she's hanging out on the dock playing a mouth organ. I feel like my mother has warned me about these kind of girls. <laughs> uh, in the movie, I might say it's a it's a jaw harp. It's like one of those boing, boing, boing little musical instruments. I don't know why. It's a weird characterization. A jaw harp. I've never heard yeah. that term. Oh, I think it's what people call it to make it not seem offensive. Yeah, I've heard the other version. Yeah. Uh, and the dolphin shows up and Sandy bestows a name upon it. Uh, jo- I'll be I'll be Sandy. Like okay. my dolphin, Sandy asked, moving even closer. <laughs> With his pants down. <laughs> yeah. Your dolphin? That's right, Sandy said. I found him. What's his name? Sandy was stumped on that one. He watched the little dolphin for several moments, thinking. Then it raised a flipper as if to wave hello. 
Flipper, he answered. Now, look, this could have gone so many different ways. Like, yeah. uh, Flipper popped up on a pinball machine and, like, <laughs> pointed to <laughs> one of the, the levers. Yeah. Or the dolphin, like, somehow it has a cut on its hand that allows it to sort of flip the bird to him. The dolphin, uh, over a period of months, buys a piece of real estate and then (laughs) sells it at a profit. (laughs) Yeah. And he's like, hmm, flipper. I just like that he was really close to calling it, like, fish hands. (laughs) (laughs) His name's Wavy. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he lives in the waves, you know He's waving hello, hello, hello uh, His name's Lionel Richie <laughs> uh, Let's think, um, he's a fish, um, but he seems to understand English um, uh, Fish, Einstein I like I like the version of this movie where he's standing there for ten minutes Mulling it over, muttering to himself He's like, alright, let me see, follow the money What do we think, this fish uh, He could talk, uh, he plays with a beach ball There's something there, balls, uh, let's think uh, And every time uh, Kim's like uh, but, And she's like, shh, 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 shh I'm thinking here mm, Lassie, no, that's not it <laughs> So Kim, the girl Tells of Scar who apparently is this uh, legendary hammerhead shark who stalks these waters and apparently once even took out an entire boat of tourists. So why is this such a popular holiday spot? If this was Jaws, that would be the focus of this entire story. I think um, Mayor... Oh, what's his name? Larry something. Larry Burns or something? is uh, he's, he's relocated to wherever this movie takes place. Uh, and his PR campaign is just doing a lot better. He's like, no, no, it's cool. Keep swimming, guys. The summer goes forever. His slogan is uh, focus on the dolphin. Yeah, exactly. There's one good dolphin out there. Just go find him. I also like that, um, uh, you know, in the book, uh, you hear about Scar from Kim. In the movie, there's just a scene where totally inexplicable for no reason that we understand for quite a while yet. You just see this shark, this big hammerhead shark, attack and kill and eat a big bunch of seagulls. And there's, like, all these terrifying zooms into its angry face. (laughs) It's, like, really fucked up. And uh, Kim also knows other stuff. Dolphins are mammals, you know. Fucking smarty pants. (laughs) They breathe air just like us. If their blowholes aren't above the water, then they can't breathe. How do you know so much? Sandy asked. I don't know, went to school overseas, perhaps? I think she read the script. <laughs> and an old man made Sandy scrub his deck. I did have to read that twice. <laughs> and then the spirit of consumerism completely possesses Sandy and he realises that he can profit from Flipper. Yeah, that's right. Straight away, they start exploiting the dolphin for money. Uh, they're charging locals to play with him and feed him. When Porter's pick up pulled into the driveway a few days later, Sandy's new business was already in swing. Diving for dollars, read one of the signs. Another read, toss a quarter, flipper returns. I like this because that's totally the American way. But then Porter shows up and nicks all of this kid's money and that's the Australian way. Yeah, exactly. He takes all the money. I think in a scene here, he forces the kid, because he thinks he's so grown up, he forces the kid to like smoke a cigar. Yeah! And drink some beer and stuff? That's not in the book. No. It, it seems like they cut out a lot of the cool stuff from the book. I don't want to jump, uh, jump the gun on this. Yeah, no, definitely uh, teaches him to smoke, teaches him to drink, teaches him to fight and fuck. Yeah. Uh, and uh, look, God, this is going back. This A lot of uh, newer listeners aren't going to have an idea of this at all, but the very first episode of Book Was Better, over 150 episodes ago, was Over the Top with Sylvester Stallone. Classic. And it was one of those moments where you realise that when you're reading a novelization, you're really not in Kansas anymore. And, and there mm. was a bit where Sylvester Stallone gave his son a happy dad slap on the bottom. Yep, and, that's and, right. And just said it as if that was a thing. And uh, our American listeners, and I don't know if they were just covering this up, were like, oh, no, that's not a thing. I've never heard that before. Oh, yeah, sure. And then I thought, is this our first happy dad slap in a while? Forget about it, Sandy laughed, rising to leave. You're surf and I'm turf. He leaned over and started to pick up a pail, but he did not make it. A swift slap on his bottom sent him flailing into the water. It is a happy dolphin slap. It's got a slap. It's got a bottom. It's all. Yep. It's all there. 
And I think Flipper functions as sort of a father figure to Elijah Wood in this movie. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Flipper's not trying to get a pelican drunk. So that makes him probably the more responsible of the... Yeah, he's definitely a better role model than um, Paul Hogan is. Than Hogs at the moment. Uh, Mm. Sandy grabbed Flipper's dorsal fin. Flipper yipped and set off. Sandy could not believe it. There he was, hitching a high-speed ride from a dolphin. This was totally cool. It was also totally foreplay. It's the same thing as, like, going for a fly around uh, Metropolis with Superman. <laughs> Can it's like showing you off his read thing. my mind? <laughs> and a photo section already, and uh, colourful photos of all these uh, lovable larrikins, like uh, Hoags, Pete the Pelican, and uh, Sexy Flipper, the sexy, teasing Flipper. That's the fold out in the in yeah. right in the middle of the thing, yeah. Come dolphin hither, blowhole. dolphin eyes, <laughs> Gli- glistening blowhole. You just want to run your finger around it. Um, and uh, look, really, I mean, you could probably stop at this right, point well, because see you, everything Luke. Nice seems having great. me on the show. Uh, I oh. think flip. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Flipper cures an autistic kid. I think I didn't write much about this. That's Marvin, the kid that strips off into his box of shorts oh, for the rest of the film. I must have missed that film. scene when I was watching Marvin. It. Yeah, it happens a lot in the book. They keep describing his underwear as getting more and more garish as it continues. But I decided not to write many excerpts about You don't want uh, to ruin Marvin. the magic. But then... Um, you didn't want to analyze it too much. You just wanted to feel it. No. I, I was really focused on this love story between uh, uh, <laughs> Sandy Burns and Flipper. Who's got the sillier name? Hard to tell. So uh, Dirk Moran comes in. He confronts Sandy in a restaurant to remind him basically that he fucking hates dolphins. One dolphin's one too many. If you don't care, take care of it, somebody else will. He turned and stomped out of the restaurant. That was a threat if Sandy had ever heard one. And he was sure that little warning was not Dick Moran's last word on the subject of Flipper. I wanted to find out what had happened. Like, had a dolphin killed his brother? Had uh, his wife cheated on him with a dolphin? His father had an affair with a dolphin, yeah, and it split up the family or something. Uh, he's got some issues there. Maybe he was uh, maybe he was an honest, you know, go get him sort of uh, tuna um, packer or tinner or something. And then once the dolphin, you know, tuna scandal sort of broke, it ruined his career. You know, I don't actually think it's just uh, Dirk Moran. I I think it turns out that pretty much everybody hates Flipper. Sandy pushed closer to the edge and looked down into the water. It was Flipper and he was going crazy. The fisherman had tied a rope around his tail. They were pulling the other end as if it were a game of tug of war. And they were winning. Hooey, the men called. Ride him. Everyone is, like, we stated, our thesis statement at the beginning of the show was how everybody loves dolphins. Turns out, no, people uh, absolutely get to abuse them and shoot them and murder them in this film without any real consequences. I do wonder if there may be some validity to this. Like, we're not really seeing their side of the story. And as we noticed before, like, Flipper's got some weird motives. He's showing up at this little kid's house unannounced in the middle of the night expecting to hang out. Like, I don't know if he's such a sympathetic character. Maybe I'm siding more with these hunters. Yeah, well, we don't know the history of the town, the dark history of when the dolphins uh, climbed in people's windows and snuggled up next to their wives. Exactly, and yeah. Tried to crush their clams with their <laughs> giant flippers. That they're allowed to do. I think uh, we're on their turf. <laughs> they need to, you know, they have, they have the law of the land. Maybe that's where a young porter learnt. That's why he, he puts his fingers in the form of a flipper when he uh, smashes into a coconut. Do we think porter might be part dolphin? Yeah, I'd say so, because we saw him on water skis when we first saw him. Exactly, that's how we're introduced to him. And that's why he uh, cleans plates with his feet. Yeah, because dolphins are always using their feet. To, yeah, well, like, for they, stuff. Yeah, they love that. Totally. Well, for, for dolphins, they don't discriminate. It's all flippers. Like you said, there's flippers sticking out all over the place. Uh, yeah, so, you're right. You know, why wouldn't you just use what was closest? Oh, it makes so much sense, though, because he's very, he's very good at communing with the animals. Like, he's very close with the pelican and that kind of thing. Like, it's a very natural back and forth between this supposedly human or at least partially human Paul Hogan and the animals. I think we might be onto something, Luke. Why else would Kathy uh, be going out with this guy? Because she's a marine biologist and she wants to study him. Oh, that's incredible. We've cracked this thing. We've cracked the clam of this uh, movie. 
crank the clam coke. <laughs> yeah. So Porter freeze flipper, but then Wasn't a couple Tom of Hanks days. In that? <laughs> I think he was. Yes, and uh, <laughs> Emily. Uh, a couple of days later, yeah. the U.S. Marine and fisheries fuckers they turn up and tell Porter they can't keep a dolphin due to the Marine Mammal Protection Act. Now, with all the things that have been happening, I think that maybe their priorities are a little bit skewed here. But uh, they're going to take Flipper. They they put him in a like stretcher. They take him away. They're going to dump him out in the deep ocean. And I thought that Porter took out his angst in a very odd way in the book. When they were finished, Porter came inside and flipped off the radio. Yeah, fuck you, radio. That's for taking my dolphin away. <laughs> I think away. Porter is just glad that... <laughs> yeah. I think Porter's just glad that the marine and fisheries uh, people didn't just take him away. Like Yes! You know, he- like E.T. Yeah. Next thing you know, Paul Hogan would be, like, in this little, like, frozen chest thing. Uh, and he'd be all white and crusty on his skin. And, and his heart would be glowing. <laughs> and poor Elijah Wood be crying his little eyes out in his thermal underwear. Yeah. But he'd be, he'd be on his way to that Chili Peppers concert. There'd be no one to stop him. God, flee. So uh, Sandy is super sad because Flipper is all alone at sea now and he wants to go to him. He wants to grab his fin and ride him and shit and whisper sweet nothings into his <laughs> blowhole. Yeah. But, but Sandy, look, he's not going to take no for an answer. So that night, Kim and him, they, they sneak out in a motorboat and hunt for Flipper. And they spy the bounty hunter, which is dropping barrels into the water. So this is really weird. Uh, I, is this right that the bad guys who keep torturing and murdering dolphins for ruining their fishing are also the ones responsible for poisoning all the fish? That's right. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, a little simple, I guess, in terms of a plot structure of just the bad guys to just be doing only bad things all the time. <laughs> um I also enjoy just the use of the term toxic waste, which doesn't mean anything, but they never explain anything in more detail than that. It's all those spaghetti. It might as well be like glowing fluoro green, like um, nuclear waste from the Springfield power plant. And the next day, Sandy ponders all of this and Porter comes good on those peppers tickets. Yeah, baby. Is this what I think it is? Front and center seats to the red hot chili peppers, Porter said proudly. You and me, friend. You're really going with me? Why not? Sandy shrugged and grinned again. Red hot chili peppers. Wicked cool. You said it, Sandy. Totally tubular. (laughs) Radical. (laughs) And then uh, Flipper shows up and uh, he has been fucked up. Within seconds, Sandy was beside Kim. Below them, gazing up with pain-filled eyes, was Flipper. His bruised and terrified little body bobbed below them. He was sinking. I hadn't seen the film up to this point, I don't think, so I didn't know what had happened. I thought maybe Mike had gone and, like, jumped him and beaten the shit out of him. Uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, Punched him in the Uh, stomach a few times. Yeah, just jumped in the water and, like, went toe-to-toe with him. Stop cock-teasing, everyone! Uh, look, obviously something's wrong with Flipper. He's not his normal happy self. So, uh, Kathy runs some tests, and a couple of days later, they have the results. Kathy joined them. Looks like Flipper was a lot more than dehydrated, she said. He has dolphin AIDS. God, what a tragedy. No, it, well, I, th- I don't know if there's feline AIDS. Could be. But no, look, he was poisoned. The tests showed levels of dioxin off the chart for these waters. Another meal out there, and he'd be glowing. Jeez, that does sound bad. Kathy's got this really interesting way of uh, helping to heal Flipper. Um, which is they make a dolphin shake. She calls it that, um, which is basically like some weird fish heads that they have in the fridge uh, and, you know, a handful of other ingredients that they just put into a blender uh, and freeze in ice cubes and then feed to uh, the dolphin by hand. But I think the weirdest part about it is this is a moment of really gratuitous product placement because they're putting together this disgusting looking cocktail of like you know animal guts and weird proteins and stuff but then also they like shoot right at the camera um paul hogan holds up a box of jello and it's tropical punch flavor and they're like oh how about this (laughs) it's just really (laughs) fucked up like who's buying it after that i think that's the perfect chaser for a tin of spaghettios yeah i guess you're right it'd spice up that sauce a little bit yeah Yep, that's a meal. That's a full meal and with a treat yeah. at the end. Every food group is represented. You've got the SpaghettiO food group. You've got the Fish Guts food group. 
and dessert. Perfect. That's uh, probably more nutritious than a lot of things American characters eat in these uh, books that we read. Yeah, I guess so. So Sandy reveals that he saw Dirk taking a dump in the ocean and they rush (laughs) out to investigate and Porter is wicked pissed. And we've made fun of some of the things in here and some of the writing, but this, mate, this cut me to the core. Porter was feeling sick too, but it was a different kind of sickness. It was dolphin AIDS. (laughs) Um, As he looked out at his beloved ocean, a deep sadness gripped his soul. God, gripping uh, poor old Hoag's soul right mm. up there. Really feel for him. Look, he's off the sea. We've established that now. We understand yeah, yeah. that uh, the sea is in his soul. So uh, what a gut punch for Hoag's. Yeah. So um, a, a plan is hatched, a glorious plan. Look, Elijah, he's going to fuck off the concert. He doesn't care anymore. He's going to trade the peppers for the flippers. He's the gonna... Peppers will be back in a couple of years. It'll be the biggest tour to date. Yep. Plus, I think they made a live DVD of that uh, of that concert that he would have gone to see. Look it up on Wikipedia. I know I did. I hope he starts his own concert at the end because we know he's a businessman. We know he never misses an opportunity. Yeah. Red Hot Chili Flippers. Oh, it's such a good idea. So who plays what in the Red Hot Chili Peppers cover band made up of characters from this movie? From Fli- F- I, d- I don't know all the band members. I only know Flea and Anthony. Well, you got the drummer who looks exactly like Will Ferrell. Um, okay. So, I don't know, maybe Mike from Ma- Breaking Bad? Maybe yeah, Paul Hogan? We've we got to put him in there. I think Flip is on bass. I think that's the easiest. Because Flea does a lot of backflips and stuff like that yeah. when he's playing. He would love that. Um, I think I think Hogs has got to be out front with the sock on his cock. Yeah. Yeah, I think that fits too. And then who do they put on guitar? Chili Peppers have changed their guitarist a couple of times. Well, just Elijah. He's the only one left, right? Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Unless he's just their yeah. manager and he's just smoking a cigar and he got his sunnies on <laughs> and he's just collecting money and tickets at the I door. I think that suits him way better. Yeah, he's making all the real profit. Shit, put Kim on guitar. Yeah, why not? And she can just <laughs> have a sock hanging out of her. Women can play guitar too, okay, Luke? Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just trying to figure out the logistics of the sock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'll figure something out. <laughs> they'll, they'll sort it out, I'm sure. So, um, look, yeah, fuck off the concert. Uh, they're going to save Flipper from going to SeaWorld. I saw Blackfish. Never, that <laughs> horrible place. Uh, and they're going to use Flipper's natural dolphin abilities to hunt out where the poison is. And also... Turns out Kim isn't quite as smart as we we may have originally thought. Flipper's secret can be summed up in one word, Kathy explained. Echolocation. Echo, what? Kim asked. So Kim <laughs> did know a lot about dolphins, but must have been taking a shit during that part of the class because... Uh, yeah. I like that this is a movie that's that's got to be just for kids. Like, it's definitely not for people who know a lot about echolocation. But this is the one thing that this movie actually really teaches you about dolphins. Yeah. Like, when I think about Free Willy, I, I learned quite a bit about whales from that movie. In this, I don't know, Flipper's even kind of an ancillary character. He's kind of an air bud in a few scenes um, where they're just bonding and playing ball together and stuff like that. And then, yeah, you get this long expo- expository scene about echolocation, and that's kind of it. Yeah, he's not really the star of this at all. And I think the big problem, and it's a shame they didn't figure this out, is that uh, they cast a lot of people with legs who uh, were more prone to being on the land. Yeah. Poor old Flipper, he's out there in the ocean. Totally. Going, Let's roll this thing. I'm ready. I'm here. I'm, I'm bringing my game. Yeah, he's like, hey, guys, remember me? Yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, we, we, we're just happy on the land for now. It takes a while to get your sea legs. Although, the, this yeah. third act... To be fair, we're going out into the ocean now. So uh, they rig up That's a true. camera and stuff to Flipper. Lucky this wasn't uh, Tommy Wiseau. He would have rigged up two cameras next to each other. Uh, and and <laughs> Flipper goes down into the ocean to suss shit out. As Flipper swam closer, the group began to make out the words on the drums. Danger. Toxic waste. Gross, Kim cried. <laughs> oh, there's a reaction. That uh, that's the understatement <laughs> yeah. of the year. Gross. Oh, I hate toxic waste. Gross. Oh, it's icky. Uh, I don't know how did they. <laughs> I missed this in the book. How did they make Flipper immune from the toxic waste? Because he they uh, just got him, nursed I him must back missed to that health, in the movie too. And then they sent him out to find toxic waste and to swim amongst it. Yeah. 
He's also a surprisingly good cameraman. That's true. Flipper, like, is holding what they call the Flippo cam uh, in his mouth uh, and just, like, perfectly swoops down to the ocean floor, zooms in and frames perfectly these barrels of toxic waste so much so that you can read it. Is he, like, screwing with the lens so you can focus and stuff like that? I saw... I don't know. This isn't a, this isn't a GoPro he's holding. This is 1996. I saw Hal Caesar on the weekend, and I thought Roger Deakins was a pretty great cinematographer, but Flipper, he'd give him a run for his money. Yeah, totally. Coen Brothers are actually in talks with Flipper for their next picture. Yeah, I hear that... Uh, because, let's be honest, when was the last time you saw Flipper in a movie? He's been doing a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. Yeah, it must have been about two days <laughs> yeah. since I last saw Flipper in a movie. Yeah. Well, he's done other stuff that he hasn't been credited for. Uh, he's Marley, mm. Marley Matlin's voice coach. Oh, is that so? <laughs> so, uh, Moran tracks them and he's ready to start a fight. Uh, and Porter and everyone go, nah, nah, we're not ready for this. They, they decide to fuck off, but... I'm not going, Sandy announced. I'm not leaving without Flipper. Something's wrong. I'll stay with the dinghy, and when I find him, I'll come in. No, Porter said, glaring. He was not about to leave Sandy behind. They spent a few minutes cleaning up and preparing the equipment for their departure. But when the trawler moved away, Sandy was in the dinghy, hiding. And no one was aware that he was gone. That is a Home Alone level of neglect. He says straight out, (laughs) I don't want to go. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay here in this little boat. And then they manage to leave and don't realize that he's in the little boat, like he said he would be. Yeah, just not paying attention at all. No. But he gets his just just desserts. He sure does, because Moran runs over and destroys the the boat, and Sandy is attacked by Scar. Do you remember Scar? Yeah, from The Lion King, right? Yes, he is here, and he... Oh, you mean that music from the 90s with all the trombones? Yes, yes, that Scar (laughs) band is here. (laughs) And everybody's You mean the dancing. theme song I recorded for your podcast? Yes. Yes. It's all, all happening. Uh, the Hammerhead Shark uh, is here as well. Um, but fear not, because fl- <laughs> Little Flipper, plucky Little Flipper, is, is uh, just straight in to the rescue. But the Hammerhead was not about to give up so easily. He emerged again, quickly, jaws agape. I oh, remember jaws. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, ready to attack. <laughs> but this time Flipper was there. The little dolphin came in from the side and rammed the hammerhead hard. Okay, Luke. Yes. <laughs> over and over, as Scar circled back towards Sandy, the little dolphin rammed him. That was all the practice he got when he crawled in next to bed uh, with Sandy. Yeah. And then uh, Flipper's family arrived. They. So is it not in the book? Is it not in the book that uh, Moran like basically tries to kill? Uh, uh, Elijah Wood, uh, he like r- he drives the boat directly into his little. Dinghy. Oh yeah, yeah, and then right here as well in the book, um, when Flipper's family arrive, they menace the shark, and Moran like picks up a big metal rod and he's gonna smash in Sandy's head with it. God, that's fucked up. But uh, Flipper, happy dolphin, slaps Moran straight into the water, and I thought for a second that he was gonna get eaten by Scar. <laughs> yeah, that would be a great ending. But no, they um, Hoax takes him back to shore, hands him over to the Coast Guard, and uh, basically it turns out it's time for Flipper and for Sandy Burns to go back to their respective families. Mm. And, that, and that's kind of where we get to the end of the book, uh, which I haven't read yet. Yep, this is this it's a happy last ending. Bit. Um, it was hard for Sandy to leave them all. He felt all choked up when both Kathy and Kim, Kath and Kim, Gave him a hug goodbye. <laughs> I didn't even realise yeah. that. But it- How did we make it this far? <laughs> but it was especially hard to say goodbye to Porter. He couldn't think of the right thing to say, so he didn't say anything. He just hugged his uncle and then turned and walked onto the ferry. When he was settled in his seat, he leaned back and thought about his summer. It had been a good one, the best summer so far. He would come back to this island, he was sure about that. Someone was laughing on the other side of the ferry. The laughter was coming from the railing. There were lots of people gathered there. They were pointing at something in the water. Sandy stood and walked over. He looked down and then he smiled. It was Flipper! Far below in the dark sea, the little dolphin was dancing. When he saw Sandy, he rose up and yipped. Sandy waved and flipped. It says flipped yipped again. In turn, editing. <laughs> On the dock, Marvin saw Flipper too. This is Marvin. I think he's autistic. His voice rose above the sound of the ferry's engines. Flipper! Marvin called. Flipper! Sandy turned and waved to Marvin. Then he leaned against the rail and watched as his friend Flipper 
escorted the ferry out to sea. The end. That's kind of that's kind of a sweet ending. It was sweet. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that aren't wrapped up. We don't learn about the fate of the new species, which, uh, as as far as we know, Paul Hogan's the only member of. That's true. Um, he didn't go back to his family. I mean, he's got a love interest. No, exactly. He didn't. He didn't return back to the sea to his pod. <laughs> Are you hearing that noise? Oh, is it a, a plastic bag that fell on me that I'm trying to stand up? <laughs> Are you, are you a sea creature? I, have you, I am a sea creature. Have you got like creature. a six pack caught I on your nose? Am tangled in a plastic bag, which just goes to show why we have to look after our oceans and its denizens, because it can happen at any time. Oh, on the final shot, like it's just a landscape shot of like some dolphins jumping around in the sea or whatever uh, in the movie. There's like the first thing it says before even like the end. It says like, if you have any dolphin problems to report, like please call 1-800-FLIPPER to save the whales or whatever. <laughs> like, it's really transparent. And then uh, the credits roll and they play the aforementioned suck my flip which, uh, holy crap, go and watch that video. That's right, a cover version by Crosby, Stills, and uh, uh, Nash. Yes, yeah. And look, didn't they get into the spirit in their uh, grey bodysuits? (laughs) Yeah, that's right. In their uh, grey fetish gear. So slippery. And uh, certainly some slippery customers in this story. So there we go, Xavier. What a cracker. I can't... Anytime there's an Australian in there, I just can't get out of the, that mode. But uh, i got to ask you, as I always do, was the book better? I feel like the only reason this movie is going to hold up, the only reason it's really worth revisiting is for the really crazy cast. I think you'll get a lot out of watching the movie because all of these actors are so recognizable and seeing them in these weird roles is a lot of fun. And I don't think you get that from the book, uh, anywhere near as much. And they cut out a lot of the cool stuff and the subtext just isn't there. So I got to say the book's not better this time, Luke. I, it's, I uh, agree with you. I think you make a solid case because I would rather watch a Paul Hogan feed a Pelican beer than just read about it. Also, my favourite bit when he just smashed that coconut, uh, not in the book. So, I've definitely got to go for the yeah. movie. Why is, like, you can hear it with the, the hosts. There's, there's almost this tinge of guilt when they choose the movie because it's, it seems like, is that the lowbrow option? But really, despite the, don't let the title of the podcast fool you because mostly the movie is better. Yeah. I'll also say that I think, yeah, we were talking about the subtext of the movie. Like, I think it is sort of more narratively rich on film, and there's a bit more complexity to it than it seems like there was, which is kind of surprising of a book of that, of that length. You would think they'd have some uh, some space to really get into it. Yeah. Apparently not. No. So, there you go. And I did find an Amazon review. There was only one. I'll, I'll try and read this as it's written. Mm-hmm. Here's a, a take on Flipper. I had a cot of fun reading this book. Liked how Flipper at the beginning was swimming in the water near the boat. I also liked how the boy fights to keep Flipper. When a hurricane comes to shore, the boy was scared. They always ate spaghetti. Liked the way they tell the story. So, yeah, there's another take on the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know if that's more or less complex and thought out than our criticisms. Mm, yeah. Um... There's slightly less uh, off-colour humour. That's true. It's a which you could make a point for. Sticks to the the facts. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, a <laughs> the journalistic integrity is uh, really there. yeah, and uh, they uh, have actually since then. I did look it up. Uh, a book reviewer for the New Yorker. Oh, is that so? And look, Xavier, that pretty much is the show. We have uh, flipped it over, off, <laughs> around. Yep, it's time to uh, take a cool dive in the water of being finished with recording a podcast. (laughs) Yeah, that's why uh, we are pros. This is our podcast. I've been doing podcasts for nearly five years. (laughs) Yes. Right, and speaking of which, uh, let's plug our respective shows. I do encourage everybody to go and... Visit fruitlesspursuits.com. That's where you find everything that uh, I'm doing. 
including uh, the Fruitless uh, Pursuits podcast, FPcast, which is a pop culture news review show. All that shit's there. Link to the Facebook page, uh, the Facebook discussion group. Come and say hello. Rate, review on iTunes. There's links there. And if you're a super fan, uh, support us on Patreon. And there is a Book Was Better TV episode that went up at the end of last week. It's an episode of, uh, or the novelization of an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the Halloween episode where their costumes turn them into real people and shit. Oh, amazing. And uh, go and check that out. And Xavier, your stuff. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I've i been doing a podcast for a really long time with my friend, Tom. We went on this podcast together one time and it was really great. So we decided to never do it again. Um, but yeah, we've yes. been doing this podcast for like over four years now. And it's actually just about to wrap up. It's called Something Something Joystick, uh, and the problem with that is we used to talk about video games a lot on the show, and now we don't really. Now we just have like our friends on who are comedians, uh, and we just do funny talking and improv games and stuff. We feature a lot of cool like local and international music. I don't know. It's a bit of a non... Uh, we've been doing this show since before you needed an idea for a podcast to exist, uh, but it's just a really fun show. I think you guys will like it. I think you should dolphinately check it out. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. um, and outside of that, um, get on get on Twitter because I I'm doing all this other stuff. I like play music and uh, we got this new podcast starting up really soon, which I'll be talking about on there. So go follow at Xavier RN on Twitter um, and like I don't know, find me on Letterboxd. If you use Letterboxd, hear me talk about movies. Yeah, me too. Joy, find me on Letterboxd. That's a lot of fun. I like that. I like that stuff a lot. I like it too. It's really good. Yeah. There was something that um, you rated the other day. Oh, Flash Gordon, you gave it two stars. And I was like, get fucked. Yeah. I don't know. I wasn't paying enough attention. I was watching it with a couple of mates. Uh, we were drinking a lot of booze. Um, but it, yeah, it wasn't really holding us for whatever reason. I think I need to revisit that one. It's it's a, a very, it's like the best Master of the Universe movie never made. Yeah. Uh, very, very camp. I mean. windows and just, uh, it's an insane film brian blessed alone deserves the watch like i'm not upset that i watched that movie and like timothy dalton is robin hood yeah that's right yeah of. basically robin hood <laughs> all sorts of all sorts of crazy stuff in there and uh do if you haven't already listen uh, listen to the book was better episode about flash gordon because that novel was weird oh, fuck, I gotta Min track was that gonna down. like anally rape his daughter at one point oh maybe i won't track that uh, down a lot of a lot of weird stuff happening in that thing so uh yes and uh, you'll let everyone know when the new podcast uh, starts yeah right? we have a new podcast coming out it's gonna start in a little while i don't want to say exactly when but it's gonna be really cool uh it's called not nothing and you will hear about it and uh i will come back on this show and remind you uh that's a promise I thought it was called called Pussy Slayers. Yeah, yeah, not nothing. Colon Pussy Slayers. <laughs> this is there yeah. we go. Pussy Colon Slayers. <laughs> po- uh, yeah, Pussy Colon Slayers with Xavier and Tom. It's pretty good. It's got a good ring to it. I'll rewrite the theme song around that. Hoping that uh, we'll get both you and Tom in soon for another episode with all three of us because that would be a lot of fun. I haven't heard from uh, Tommy. S for a while now. Since like episode 40 or something of your show? Yeah, long time ago. And uh, we're looking at doing a, a Mighty Ducks, right? Yeah, me and Tom are big ice hockey nuts. Uh, so it would be uh, it would be silly not to, I think. So look forward to that one. I know the audience will, will definitely be all up in that. Yes. And uh, look, I'm a big duck. I'm a big duck fan. You're, so a, you're a duck I, head I'm as sure well? I, well? I know I like ducks. So you guys like hockey. I like ducks. Okay. It, it sounds like a, a, a match made in We'll heaven. see if we can find the duck. common ground. Did you say you had a duck? Yeah. yeah, I had a duck. Really? When I was like about 12, I had a you duck. You had one duck? Yeah, one like duck. A pet. Why? Well, I had two, but one of them died when they were really little. But oh. then the other one it became a very robust duck. Did it have a name? And, and he kind of... Yeah, his name was Howard, of course. Okay. And uh, he... He was a big white duck, and I used to walk him around the like neighborhood. And, and when I came home from school, he would like run up and, and meet me. This can't be real. Is, were you? In, is this no, like the, the the lost third movie in the Lassie Flipper tr- uh, trilogy? <laughs> yeah, like we got along really well. We were living in a house in uh, Bassendine, which had like a really huge garden, and it had um, like chicken sheds and stuff like that. So. 
I got to finally get a duck and there was a like a pond like about a block down from our house so I used to take him down there and and wait around and he'd swim and uh, yeah he was amazing but then when we moved we moved to Canberra so I had to give up my duck. He he went to a farm somewhere, or so I'm told. No, <laughs> did you have like a lovely, yeah. delicious hot meal sometime around then? Yeah, and and that night we had the best uh, sweet and sour Peking duck. But I don't think the two were related. No, of course not. No, it's just a good fortune, you know. No, damn fine duck. And we had some good fortune cookies uh, when we had that duck as well. So funny you should mention that mm. and. Uh, I remember it very well because I opened up uh, uh, my cookie and it said, uh, your duck is fucked. And I thought, uh, that's, uh, I, I, I thought, yeah, I couldn't actually figure it out. Good for Howard, getting fucked, getting some of those duck breasts <laughs> that we saw in the, Howard the Duck movie. Yeah. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, that, that's what I love about, um, you know, we talked about how people want to have sex with uh, dolphins, mm-hmm. but... But don't, like, foul in general. Just have the, the juiciest breasts and thighs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Are you, so, are you more of a breast man or a, or a thigh man? Or a leg man? I'm a breast man. I, I like breasts. I'm a wing man in that my friend always seems to get uh, some action and not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I definitely like breasts. I don't mind uh, thighs. Uh, I just, I just don't want to be like delving down there and find a nugget. Oh yeah, no, you don't want that. <laughs> We're just a bunch of stuffing. Yeah, I don't mind the parson's nose. <laughs> What's the parson's nose? The parson's nose is the like that's a ye oldy term for the um, you know, like the little bum bit. Okay. Oh yeah. Like, you know when you get like a barbecue chicken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the parson's nose. I guess it looks like a um. A, a, a humorous sketch of a reverend as it might be found in ye oldy Cole's funny picture book or something. Ah, uh, you're so much older than me, Luke. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm 79. Yes. And I'm but six. But <laughs> You are but six, yes. Yes, young Xavier. <laughs> so, uh, thank you uh, for joining me on the show and you shall receive a ginger nut for your infant piety oh heavens thank you master <laughs> uh, mr luke master yes. luke i was just thinking yes. of something else. Yeah. all right well there we go uh that was the show there it is thank you so much for letting me come back to oh thanks man always an absolutely absolute pleasure anytime all right next episode see you next week guys yeah, right. thank well, you no absolutely not my uh <laughs> What is that? Okay, I should mention, that's a good point. Next episode, uh, Violet will be joining me, and we are going to travel into a whole world of water. And by which I mean oh. a water world. Uh, amazing. Where, the film where where Kevin Costner uh, drinks his own piss. Yes. Keep an eye out for mm. dolphins in that one. Ooh. You never know. Be in the yeah, background of look, some shot. Everything's linked. Like a whole bunch of sausages. Oh, I think I think you're gonna say spaghettios for some reason. Yeah, are they linked? I don't think they're linked. I think there's some Mobius strip shit happening. If you manage to get your spaghettios linked, I think a magician could take a bowl of spaghettios and like put <laughs> his fingers in them and then pull them out, and they're all linked. I could imagine that, but I don't think it, like it just. Are you talking about a magician by the name of Paul Hogan? Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He certainly cast a magic spell on uh, all of us yeah. uh, back in the '80s with a little film I like to call. Crocodile Dundee, because that's uh, its name. I feel like we're just kind of uh, wasting everyone's time. Now. I just don't want this to stop, Luke. I'm having a lot of fun. No, I know you. Let's we're pitch a Dolphin hang-up. Dundee. Let's talk about that for 25 minutes. <laughs> Dol- well, Dolphin Dundee, a dolphin that uh, swims to America and, and finds out that everything's different. <laughs> I'd watch it. Yeah, I would too. That's not a flipper. This is a, a flipper. Yeah. All right. So, um, you, you got to say the thing. Oh, yeah. I got to say the thing. This is my favorite oh, part. This is what I was waiting little, for the whole time. And, and there is a wide open opportunity yeah. here. Let, let's see This if you might take be it. the best the best one of these that yeah. you ever have on this yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. So, go on. Make a meal of it. All right. Luke. Listeners. People are overhearing it because I'm talking too loudly and spilling out of their headphones and they're on a train or something. I will catch you on the flip!
Epa! Tchau, tchau.